Go on to the red dot. And then you're gonna follow the ball. Click on the ball. Until you catch the ball. You're gonna catch the ball. So you can see that even though it look on the other graphs, you can see that it has it looks like it has different curvature. But when we have the time to take into account, you can see that this curvature is is just if you drag it down, it will follow this curvature. So that big curvature that you see, that is the universal curvature of time and space for Earth. Because every planet has unique gravity. With every unique gravity, there's a universal curvature that follows with it. So let's say if you do the same experiment in Mars, you'll have a different curvature, but whether you throw it up or you throw it, you know, like far to another person, will follow this one universal curvature for Mars. If you have more um, points like these, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to be more precise. So that's why this one is four, negative 4.8, which is rounds it up to negative 9.8. So that's why it's like way more precise. But since we didn't have that much um, points as this, and we couldn't really see the uh, ruler, so we have to take that into account of why this doesn't really equal to 9.8. But from this, you can see that now the acceleration equals equals gravity. This is gonna come in like really important. So this this means that since acceleration equals gravity, acceleration frame is equivalent to the gravitational field. <laughs> Since acceleration causes time to be slow and acceleration is equal to the gravitational field, the gravitational field also makes the time slow. So that's why um, Einstein came in and said gravitational field curves time and space.